Welcome everyone to another Win by Noon Monday Mastermind. I am your co-host, founder of Win by Noon, Todd Bookspan, and I'm always excited, always, always excited to introduce my co-host, founder of Plug and Play SM, Deborah Bird. What's up, Deborah? Hello. I'm good. I was actually a little under the weather yesterday. I had some some sniffles and you know congestion. I don't think I'm used to the the cold and the rain here in Dallas. It's early this time of year cold. Goodness. You know, I'm like chilly. This is, I'm, I'm uh, working from home with my beautiful fake background and I, it's freezing this room I'm in. Holy smokes. Nobody's in this room and it is just really cold. Like I'm, my hands are in my pockets and I'm shivering uh, probably because I'm also drinking, you know, cold electrolyte beverage. So I think I'll switch to some decaf coffee after this call to warm me up. Um, Anybody always, who's from up North, you're going to be like, we are the biggest wimps. Cause it's probably like 50 degrees, but Todd is from Arizona. I'm from Dallas, Texas. And we, anything to me lower than like 60, I'm like, it's cold. I took a, you know, three mile walk with my wife and our dogs this morning. And it was, it was like 40, like almost 50. So it was like 50 ish. We'll call it that. But you know, I wore shorts and we put the dogs in their sweaters. So it was nice. Now you, you're starting the cold plunge. You know, I, I call it my coldish, tangent, it's but... a coldish, it's a coldish plunge. So, you know, they, okay. um, the little box that's hooked to it, the chiller is set at 39 degrees. Um, but but my plunge isn't set that cold yet. I'm gonna I'm working my way down. It's uh 75 right now. Which oh is my really cold gosh. for me. Are you joking? 75? It's really, it's really cold for me. Holy smokes. I get in it and it's but how, how low minutes. should it go? Um I bet you it'll be in the 40s, I think. I don't know. I don't know the protocol yet, but I think by the end of the year I'll be in a low protocol. My sauna, I, I sat just my sauna. Saw... I literally just watched a TikTok from the Andrew Huberman lab or whatever. Yeah, that, Huberman. Oh yeah. You know, Andrew, he's awesome. Yes. And he was talking about how many minutes in cold. And I think cold was like, I want to say it was 39 degrees or lower, but the goal's 11 minutes for the whole week. Not at one time, obviously. Spaced well, that's, out. I'll he, listen to him. He has good, he has good protocol. So that'll be good. And yeah. I got the sauna going. We did the sauna twice this weekend. That was nice. Wow. I uh, did meditation you. while I was in the sauna. That was really, you know, kind of enjoyable. Now, don't you think that's the real wealth is health or it starts with good health? It is. Otherwise, it is. I, I, I'm, I, I joke about it because it's, uh, you know, I'm training to be an old man. I'm already like 54. So some people say I'm already an old man, but I'm like trained to be a really old man. That's healthy. Like I'm going to be able to get around and move and, you know, be flexible and all those things. So, so you already said it, right? We, we talked about two things that we, we framed this call for, right? So 30 minutes, we said your wealth. So you just said it, your wealth is your health, but we're, we're, that really wasn't the tangent we were going to go on, even though we went on that tangent. Um, and then also small business Saturday, because what Deborah said was, Hey, this is just a great time to support small business. So I'll let her talk about that as we get there. But really the, your wealth thing came around. Um, I never want to be a downer, but I, so I, I'm part of a group called be wealthy. So Brett Tanner, who um, also leads KW wealth. So I'm actually in two of his different uh, webinars. So there was probably about 80 people in the room uh, this last Thursday and Friday. And, um, ironically, uh, this time, normally I'm the only lender in the room, but they have a, they had a wholesale group, like people who wholesale and flip and they combine the two groups. And that group actually had two lenders in there. So it was actually kind of fun. There was actually three loan officers in the group. We had lunch the first day, um, super good guys. And it was a lot of fun to hear what they have going on. And, and they've been in the group a lot longer than me. I was, I was in it starting in the spring. And, uh, but the rest are like baller realtors. Like, right? so some people are from, you know, they're all from all over the country. And some people are there because they have big teams and they're learning to grow and scale their team or, or build out other versions of it. But the thing's called Be Wealthy. And I would say this that the thing that uh, started off with was Brett giving an economic update. And I, I think that, oh, let me just finish up the piece on the room. So, I mean, in the room were some of the top agents, like, you know, number one for volume exp agent in the world number one real broker agent plus these you know huge kw agents that own brokerages and all, you know all sorts of stuff there's people there with really big businesses um you know one guy's like well yeah i have 300 employees like i mean these people run big real estate businesses those weren't 300 team members those are 300 employees and this guy's wow. you know where he's from he's apparently a big deal he's got like 200 billboards um you don't and, remember his name david lindahl so someone here might know, I think he's from Detroit. Um, and, uh, but so there's some really, really brilliant minds in the room. And um, Brett starts off talking about the economy. And I would, I would be 
fooling you all if I didn't say that when Brett laid up his graphs at the KW Wealth event that John Downs and I were at together just a few weeks ago about the economy, he didn't scare me a little. Um, Brett is funny. Brett is a guy who always makes more than 10% on all of his investments that he does. And typically he's making 15 to 20%. And he was getting all excited about the fact that he has lots of money, you know, lots of zeros stashed in uh, treasury bills and in accounts making like 4% guaranteed with no, no interest and with no taxes. And how excited he was about that. And he's like, that's because I'm really nervous about where the economy is going. And he's just stashing his cash for the opportunity he feels is coming. So he feels that the economy is going to do this. And, and so when I'm talking about the wealth today, really, it was a good reminder because he walked through different metrics than what we see from the mortgage side of things. Now, um, Brett's personal coach is a guy named Gary Keller, who's a billionaire, is pretty smart. And uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to say that to his coaches, but I think he'd be okay with it. He says it. Um, and and he, um, he's just bringing up why he's concerned about the economy. And he is telling a little bit different story than I think we're hearing in the mortgage business. And I felt like when we went through the housing crisis, you know, I own rental properties, and I felt like um, there were, we were, I was looking at the rose-colored glasses. I was being talked to by people in our industry who are friends of mine, and I respect a thousand percent. And they were talking about the positive things that we should be looking at. And I, I think that's important. We need to have the positivity that rates are going to be lower next year because they are. And I believe that. Um, and then we have to know that people will buy more houses when that happens. And I believe that. And that we'll have some refinance opportunities when that happens. And I believe that too. But I think we have to also then look at what's going to happen with the rest of the economy, right? What's the recession that we're going to go into look like? How hard will we be hurt, right? When you look at the statistics, go to fred.com, which is a government site, and look at the amount of people um, that have the highest credit card debt in history, and then look at the savings rate being the lowest it is in history, and realize that it's not going to be pretty for everybody, and then think about, okay, maybe rates will be lower and, and people can refinance. Maybe uh, more people will be buying houses. That'll be good for my mortgage business, but how's the rest of the world going to be? Are the housing buyers all going to be able to jump back in, or is affordability maybe still out of whack, even even if rates come down, unless prices come down, and if prices come down, how does that impact us? Are there foreclosures that we didn't think we were going to have? Are there um, people who are frustrated because they can't refinance because their house is now underwater, maybe because they only put down 5% and they, you know, they bought at the top of the market? So there's other things that are going to come out of it. And so what I want us to do is, number one, continue to be positive about the benefits we're going to have when rates get lower. Because I believe here in Arizona, where my team operates, I do think that when rates go to a rate with a five, the people who before said, I'll never buy a house in the fives will be like, heck yeah, it's not a six, right? Or seven. So I do know that that's going to be really good. Um, but just let's just not look through with rose-colored glasses. Let's make sure that we are personal home is in order. Like, what do you need to be doing? So what I have over here, you can't see it on my wall. is a big post-it note. And it shows, um, you know, my different companies that I'm involved in. Um, it shows, um, you know, my different LLCs. It shows um, my different bank accounts for each of the businesses. And then I'm looking at, okay, where, you know, what do I need to get rid of? Because it's too much. First off, I look at it, go, it's overwhelming. I literally have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 15 different places that personally my money is. And I'm like, that's just way too many places. Um, but some of it's like, I got money at Treasury Direct. That's where you can get this month, next six months, 6.6 6 something percent, um, you know, guaranteed by the government, you know, tax-free bonds. So I've got some money there because it was 9 point something percent last month. So there's some stuff that's kind of weird, you know, that that's it, but I'm trying to simplify my life. But more importantly is just make sure you're ready. Like what happens if you think that you're going to do enough loans that all of a sudden your income is going to be off the charts again? What happens if it's really good, but it's not off the charts? You know, do you need to be a little bit more financially conservative between now and the end of the year just to see what happens or between now and first quarter just to see what happens? Um, I wasn't looking at it from that perspective. I think like a lot of people, you know, we talked about it here, Deborah and I did earlier this year, let's let's eliminate some of the costs that we don't need to have. And I did all that stuff, but now I'm saying, okay, well, hmm, you know what, maybe, just maybe like, you know, there's a few more things I want to buy. So we just talked about my cold plunge and my sauna. So now I feel kind of bad about that. But um, like I was gonna buy my wife a new car and I'm like, you know what, hon, let's buy a used car. 
You know, I mean, those are the kinds of things that the decisions that I'm making, you know, I've got an overpriced pickup truck that I towed around my Airstream with, and I was just going to do a straight across trade. Well, you know what now I'm going to do is I'm going to actually buy a used car that's about 20 grand cheaper than my truck. And I'm going to take that 20 grand, I'm going to put it into the bank. Um, you know, so I'm just going to be a little more conservative with some of, you know, the things that I, that I have. I moved money two months ago after having a, a conversation with my buddy, Kevin Kaufman from some of my stocks, I put them into some dividend paying stocks. So I'm creating some cash flow, you know, behind the scenes that, you know, is there if I need it right now, I don't need it, but, you know, I'm just trying to be smart about it. And so I want you all to think about, just look at the source of your information, but let's just have a plan that is, let's be conservative as, it, as if we don't rocket ship next year, that we just have a good year next year and just make sure you're financially set for it. And so I know that's not a very sexy conversation to have, but, um, but I think that's the first lesson of being wealthy is to make sure that you're, you're looking ahead and you're looking ahead with wide open eyes. And in my case, I want to, I know that our market here is going to do well from a mortgage perspective. I don't know how the real estate part's going to hold out. And, but I know I'm, I'm ready now or mainly ready, but I'll be ready within the next couple of weeks, regardless of what happens. And so um, you're going to hear me talk more about the positive stuff about wealth heading into 2023. Like, I feel like there's so many opportunities out there. And I feel like um, I had another conversation today. We, we uh, was talking to a, a well-respected comrade of ours in the industry. And, uh, and I just asked him that question because he said, oh, you seem so excited about this wealth thing. And uh, we both just talked about it. We know a lot of loan officers who make a lot of money, but aren't really wealthy as a result. And so um, just stay tuned. Stay tuned. My goal is for you all to be wealthy down the road. And uh, I'm going to pour into you on that one. So. Sorry, that was a big rant. That was like 12 no. minutes of me, uh, me just me talking. Woo. Take a breath. Well, the first thing I, I thought of is you said, okay, so he said, what are some different strategies on where we should stash our cash? Like what, a, what type of accounts would you recommend putting them in? You know what? I Googled high interest accounts. And so he just said he he's using, um, he's laddering, tre laddering treasuries, um, one, two and three month treasuries. Cause you can make almost 4% on those right now. It's crazy. Um, and those are tax free. And so he has his banker doing it. He says, you can go to us. Um, you can go to the place where you buy the I bonds, which is, um, I want to say it's treasury direct. Let's see here. I bonds. Um, yeah, treasurydirect.gov. You can buy them directly there. That's a lot of work to my, you know, in my case, what he did was he took a, a sum of money and he put some into, put a third into 90 day bonds, a third into two month bonds, and then a third into one month bonds. And then as, as they all renew, as they all mature, he'll put the next batch into, so when the one month bonds mature, he'll put them into 90 day bonds. And then and then he'll basically, once he gets three months into it, everything's on 90 day bonds. So they're making higher money. And, um, but he's got money coming available every 30 days. So he doesn't have to worry about it from a liquidity perspective. So that's mm -hmm. kind of higher level, but that's kind of cool. I'm mm -hmm. looking into that with my uh, TD Ameritrade account to see if they can do it for me. And then the other thing is I looked up just high yield um, accounts. So you can go to like Amex and get 3% right now. Um, you know, with open an account there, I think Citibank offers the same thing. And then I found something called, UFB direct, which is, um, you know, insured. It's uh, whatever they call it, FDIC insured. And they're paying 3.86%, I think is what they're paying right now. Wow. And so I think there's places out there you can make good money. So he just said, Hey, put your money, your, your stock stuff. So I, there's an, a place called current, um, and they'll pay 4% up to $6,000. So I found that before and I'm all excited about it because you can have a main account and like three sub accounts. So to me, that's what every, everyone's kids should have. Right. So their kids, mm -hmm. the money comes in the main account and then they can put it into these little, these little late, you can label it, you know, like hmm. vacation fund and charity fund. And, uh, and so I think it's kind of cool. Anytime you can have an account, you know, accounts where you can subdivide some stuff. I've got some, of my business accounts set up that way. So, you know, money flows in you know, like for my rental properties, it flows into the main account. And then I put it into this one pays all the bills. And then this one's my repair, my repair account. Um, and I haven't executed the third account, but that'll eventually be just profit, you know, but really I'm peeling the profit off, putting it into a, um, I guess the third account would be reserves, maybe, you know, hmm. something that's like that. called current. So, um, but that one's for more for kids because it's only, it's got a $6,000 limit, yeah. right? And so, you know, most of you can hopefully fill that up pretty quick. Um, but I play with it. I look at it all the time. I'm like, I made like 60 bucks of interest in the last couple of months there. It's like, you know, it was super exciting. It wasn't playing with the new, uh, my VPN on my, on my iPhone, but, uh, 
and it wants to set up alerts all the time. I hate alerts, but I've made $80 worth of interest on it. Like, I'm so excited about that. My kids are like, dad, yeah. stop talking about that. I'm like, yeah. but I made 80 bucks of interest. That's great. That's it. I mean, I'm, I'm super excited about it, but, um, but yeah, that's so anything that's, that he said to be on the lookout for, like saying the next six to 12 months with kind of where he believes the economy is. Cause I'm assuming we all, anyone who's listening to this may consume the same content that you would that's in mortgage and real estate, but anything that you feel like we should know that may be doom and gloom, but you know, you know, I think he's looking at the same stuff that Dan raw, which is looking at. Right. So I think, you know, Dan, Dan takes a pretty deep dive every week. And, and so I think, you know, what, what the difference I think is when I listen to Dan raw, which Dan says, here's the reasons that the economy is going to do bad. And he says, the weird thing is there's these things over here that say the economy is going to do good. Um, and, and so, you know, he's given both sides of it because he's, you know, it's hard to place the bet. All Brett did was said, here's all the reasons to be bad. And so that's fine. I mean, again, I'm happy to look at that because it, it's, to me, it's just that little nudge in the side to tell me to be a little more vigilant with my money. And when I hear a guy who's got to have five times the net worth I have to 10 times the net worth I have or more. And when he's saying, hey, I'm super excited because my stuff is my cash. And granny's got a lot more cash than me sitting on the sidelines. But I'm making sure it's in this account where I've got money in my TD Ameritrade account. It's probably making a quarter of a percent. I'm like, are oh, you idiot? It's been there for three months. And I'm like, gosh, in that three months, I probably could have made a couple grand of interest or whatever, you know, on that mm -hmm. on that money. And um, and so, again, it's just one of those things where slow down, take a breath. And again, just check, you know, check all your stuff. I mean, I did it a few months ago. I, I've said on here before, I've got a comma insurance branch. I had them reshop all my insurance for me. Um, that's just yeah. part of what they do. But I looked at all my insurance to see where I could save, you know, money there. And guess what? I found myself up, I had two properties that are double insured. My old insurance agent forgot to oh. cancel. Them. And so, you know, I'll get two grand back, you know, get two grand back for that. Uh, and so those are, you know, those are the kinds of things I think that are, you know, that are kind of Im important. Um so I, you know, I know that's kind of a, a long rant on it, but I think it's really, I, I always said it, you know, my, my coaches, when the financial crisis hit, like I said, they just really should have told me, um, I would have appreciated if they would have said, Hey, how are you doing? Like, are you looking at your spending at all? You know, are you, you know, do you have your savings, you know, set aside? Are you, are you doing those things? And wealth to me is a long-term game, but I think there's opportunity short-term to protect yourself and do, um, do disproportionately better than everyone else. Well, and I think it just goes to show the number that, you know, the last couple of years, it has been good for mortgage and real estate. And many were overspending possibly or building big homes and buying multiple cars. And now they're, they're bleeding. Um, so it's, it's that famous saying, it doesn't matter how much you make. It's about how much you save. And are you just being aware because you know we don't get bank statements in, anymore in the mail so I think it's just so easy to spend between Apple Pay and putting in your debit card and you know maybe you get alerts that you have statements that are available online but are you taking the time to go through and even making it a competitive game of just could we save an additional 10% like my number I don't even want to know the total like year to date that I've spent in fees for like Uber Eats <laughs> for just like the luxury of not having to get out of my house or cook because I don't cook. So I have Uber Eats deliver food, no matter kind of wherever I am. And I wonder just how much, if I just broke down the fee portion of that by me being lazy. Well, and you, you definitely don't want to look at that, but then, then the all, then what I say is, okay, well, like we got a DoorDash pass. And so I don't know what DoorDash costs, but mm. compared to Uber Eats, but it's like, oh, I don't have, I got lower fees, but I still have to pay a tip. You know, like we ordered, yeah. we ordered a, a local restaurant and the uh, my daughter who was in town from New York accidentally hit the wrong address. It was our old address. And so I called them and they're like, well, we, you just have to change that on the app. And so the app doesn't change it. Cause they don't, it's they third party it through, through a third like DoorDash in this case. Yeah. And so I'm like, you can't change it. She's like, Nope. I'm like, well, what do I do? She's like, well, I'm making your food now. Why don't you just come get it? So I had to drive over there. So I basically gave myself a $20 tip and an $8 delivery fee for picking it up myself. Cause I'm like, how do I get my $8 delivery fee back? She's like, you do it on the app. I'm like, no, you don't. <laughs> She's like, no, no. Yeah. That, that was her answer. Um, so they did get a one-star Yelp review for their lack of helpfulness. Well, that's that critical. Bad. I mean, reviews. Yeah. Okay. So said, hey, um, order on their app. I said, just don't order on their app. If you expect to make any changes, cause you can't. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I can't tell you how many times I've done that too. And 
I've called, or, you know, when you look at the cost of the meal, it, usually if you would go eat at the place, it includes a drink. Well, they don't include the drink, at least on Uber Eats, whenever you order. And I'm like, man, you pay so much between the delivery fee, the tip, the meal, and it doesn't even include the drink. And it's not always correct. And you can't send it back at that point. Like I love ordering Japanese steakhouse from Kobe Steakhouse. And I like, I don't eat salad. So I ask for two soup broth only. And they always do soup and salad. And my broth is never without the mushrooms and those little green. green you know, guys. what a troubled life we live, right? <laughs> yes. Um, well, speaking of which, so you do know that the, well, uh, I think this is true. I haven't, I did a Google search on it, but the best day of the year to buy a used car. Do you know when that is? I have no clue. <laughs> Black Friday. Apparently. Really? Yeah. Except I, so I've been looking for a Ford Bronco and that's the only used car that's actually selling above value, which is ridiculous. You can build one, which they haven't opened up the gates to be able to order a Bronco. So you're stuck with either buying used and I'm talking like 50 miles on it and they it's 20,000 more because of the demand. So I'm being patient. You're waiting to wait till Black Friday. No, I'm not going to buy used because they're going to jack up the pricing. I'm just going to be patient and wait. Until they I keep open saying the that too, but order. every week, every week I wait, the value of my F-250 goes down. So, but at least yeah. now that I'm buying used, the value of that's going down too. Right. Well, so, you may want to look for Friday, Black Friday. It that's went down five, it went down four grand, five grand ish, but the price of the new cars came down like 15 grand. So I was ahead for a while. That was like a month mm -hmm. ago. And then I was just too busy to, you know. Yeah. It was bad salesman. The salesman, we made the deal. We agreed on the deal. He said, great, I'll take care of it after my day off. And then the, one of the other dealerships sold his car, my car while I was gone. So I was actually okay with that because yeah. I didn't really. All right. So let's, um, anything else on wealth that you think we should we should talk about before we talk about Small Business Saturday and how we can kind of take advantage of um, that from a marketing perspective? You know, the the only other thing is making sure you have multiple streams of income or you know, maybe you're learning a new skill during this time period. And to me, it always, it's nice when you can depend on something else so that those who are struggling, as long as it's not, you know, like a distractor, like I know the ERC, that's the correct way, ERC, right? ERC. That's, yeah. Um, it's a way to, to bring in additional income without it being a distractor to your main source of income, but just not depending on one because there's nothing scarier and I know there's a lot of fear out there for people in the industry who are barely scraping it by. I was just running MMI reports on all of our top producers and looking at adjusting their favorites oh. list and, and kind of seeing how they're doing. How, how's the trend? Look at you, it's, getting, man. Oh. it's skinny. It's getting skinny. And the other eye opener was the number of LOs who are like, when you look at how much business they've done this year, how many are coming from like onesie twosie deals from agents. Like it's very lean at the top of how many are consistently sending them their business. And, and I go and I look at the real estate agent and I can see like who the other loan officer partners could be. And it's not that they're sending it other places. It's just, it's requiring so many more agents on deck who may just send you one deal all year, but you got to have more of those to get, you know, a fraction of the business that you did last year, which is why, you know, focus on building wealth, which is focusing on your health and financially looking at where you're spending your money, but then also are there ways you can monetize in other areas? Yeah, I think that's a hard one. You know, the ERC one, you know, I'm a broken record. I decided I'm not really going to talk about that much for a while. Um, however, Friday, you know, first LO and refer checks went out yesterday or went out. So that was good. People, ironically, it was a mortgage company, a mortgage and real estate company. That was the first in my group's pipeline, but it was um, and loan officer got a check for referring his CPA, his CPA signed up and has referred a bunch of people. So the CPA got a check, the loan officer got a check. So it's kind of cool. Um, on Friday, it's the first one. And there's, I think, another five or six that are going to get checks this week. So, um, wow. so that is working if you do know small businesses. And I can just tell you because I've been coaching my team on it. And my team has had two in the past, one today and one the other day where someone was calling up who didn't really qualify for a mortgage. It was like a hope and dreamer. Um, Shay, who, who, who's my kind of right hand, took over all my stuff that my old stuff, it was, you know, and it was someone who's got 30 employees and, you know, they have no money and, and they're like, oh, how do we do this? And, you know, 30 employees could be, you know, 600 grand to them or something like that. Crazy. So mm -hmm. 
Um, so there's just, there's opportunities out there in your clients. And so that, that one is an easy one. Um, just ping me if you have interest in it. Um, but I do like that. I think it's hard though, for most people. I mean, if you said, Hey, come up with another source of income for me, I don't think there's very many easy things to, to do. And, you know, other than clean out the, the storage room and sell stuff, which, you know, I keep threatening to do, but I'm not very good at that offer up thing. You know, they offer up to me and I'm like, mm-hmm. well, it's buried in the garage by my car. So once I unbury it, I'll relist it and I'll sell it to somebody. Cause I don't really, it's bad. It's bad. I just need car batteries dead. That doesn't help. Um, all right. So let's talk small business. Um, and then we're going to go a couple minutes over cause we kept going, which I really didn't want to do, but that's all right. Um, and so I, as always grateful for all of you who are we only had one person leave. So you guys are all crushing it. Apparently one person didn't like it when I told them the economy was going to go down um, and to be ready for it. But uh, I'd rather be ready for it and wrong than not ready for it and have it happen. Yeah. Well, and sometimes truth hurts. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's better to know and be prepared and then to be caught not prepared. And well, not when I hear a guy at the front of the room who I think is passively making more money than most of the people um, on this call that make in a year, then that tells me I should listen. Right. Um, all right. So what is Small Business Saturday? So it's a day to recognize. I I think the strategy here is look around your hometown. Where are some small businesses, maybe family owned, that you could help support in effort for you know, Friday we know is Black Friday, Saturday is Small Business Saturday, and then Monday is Cyber Monday. Tuesday is actually Giving Tuesday. But if you look around your your hometown in some local areas that, you know, you know that they could also use help, then spotlight them. Maybe make a post or do an interview. You could really do it every day this week until Saturday and just make it very nonchalant, very informal Q&A, kind of like this, where you just ask them what made them want to get into the business that they're in and, you know, talk, let them talk a little bit about some of the challenges that they're seeing or some frequently asked questions for whatever it is that they do. And then make sure at the end, you tie it down with um, how people could follow or get engaged with them if they would like their products or services. So it's just a way to really highlight different small businesses who are out there hustling and grinding just like we are and to promote and honor them. I love that. I think it's a, having had a small business for 10 years, owning my bicycle stores, um, it was, you know, the, the interesting thing to me, and I love that their small business Saturday would be, I would come home for Thanksgiving in Phoenix to visit my family and my in-laws. And I would zoom back to Tucson for Black Friday and guess where everyone was. They were in the shopping malls at that time. This was like 1990 to 2000. So it wasn't that long ago. I guess it was. And um, it was before people were shopping online. And but it's just not a lot of people came into small businesses. So I love the fact that they're small business Saturday. We get a little a little bit busier on on the weekend, but you know, it's just not the same. And you know, when you're a small business and you're really counting on this holiday season to get you through, you know, after a hard couple of years, I think um it's it definitely when you said it, it's making me think about where are we as a family gonna spend, you know, gonna spend our dollars. You know, we're very large mm-hmm. Amazon purchasers and we mm-hmm. will absolutely um, be purchasing. I should throw it out there that you can get a no borrower left behind mortgage coach or win by noon shirt for 25% off during cyber Friday through cyber Monday. So, Oh, good. That'll be, uh, that'll be advertised. Um, our social media team, <laughs> Deborah bird <laughs> and company will uh, be promoting that. So, um, nice job acting surprise since I know Adam's told, told you about it already. Uh-huh. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think that's cool. So what else would you do if you were, you know, how else do you think people can, can help that and use it to, um, you know, be mutually beneficial? Well, anytime you can make a post and then you tag them in the post or invite them as a collaborator. So it goes on both of your feeds is always going to help create that adopted trust just through social. Um, and it, it, you're, you'd be surprised. It just starts with reaching out. And I, I told Todd, I have two guests lined up for next year that I'm really excited about that are, big time guest. Um, it'll be in January. And all I did was reach out through a DM on social. And I thought I'd have to pay to have these people on to be able to do an interview. And I was shocked that they just pointed me to the, the direction of their PR person. And I just emailed them and got it booked if they just wanted to know a little bit of, about what it what it was. And then they said, yes. And I was like, what? 
And I was mad too, because I met one of these people and I was like, hey, I'm going to help you get noted. Do you want to be more known in the mortgage business? Like, I'd love to be. And we, I texted him and then we, I've been texting for like two months and then Deborah already nailed the interview without, without me asking for it. So I'm so grateful I for mean, you. It, yeah. And you could go live just like this. In fact, I have um, Robert actually recorded a tutorial. So if any of you guys need a tutorial of how to set up a Zoom webinar that can stream live through a Facebook group or how to set it up so you can have a guest like what we do every Friday or every week with just these calls. And I have Robert from Mortgage Coach who actually recorded a screen share and like walked me through all the steps. So just, you know, shoot me an email. If you email marketing at plug and play sm.com, I'll send that over to you, but it's just getting the connections. And then that opens the doors for more possibilities where you, you can either have them on live you make the post yourself, you email them the graphic maybe ahead of time, tell them to send it out to their entire database to let them know that you're going to be going live. Maybe it's on Wednesday. And so again, that email dump is going to go, your branding with their branding will go in front of all of their clients. Then you're going live. Then you can make micro content after the fact. Um, and so I just, I'm a big believer that when you give more, it it will come back. And so just focus on how you can solve other business problems right now and start with local owned in the community that you serve. I, I love it. And you, you do push your clients to do it. I don't know how many do, but I can say that's one, I don't regret a whole lot in life, but it's one of the things that I kind of did one of these on my face. I did a post right when COVID hit, Hey, who knows a small business who needs a little bit of love or something like that. And all these people raised their hands. And I really intended to do, do Facebook live and just do exactly what you did and promote all these businesses. And I just got so busy being busy, but I could have carved out 15 minutes to do that once every day or a couple times a week. And I didn't. So I just think it's a great reminder that you brought it up as a topic and something I think that we should all look at. Hey, can we integrate this into um, our business, but more importantly, is there someone in the community that we can help out? And plus, how cool would it be when you go in there if they're like, hey, look who it is? Like, you know, you're their new favorite yeah. client. Yeah, I mean, it's actually fun. Once you start proactively reaching out, it gives a different angle from your typical prospecting instead of just always going after the same prospects week after week. It starts to become fun. I have a few clients that will send me messages and they're like, yeah, it's actually a great break in the day because I'm learning about somebody new and interesting and I'm having conversations that I never had before. And you're kind of learning about somebody's story of what drove them to go into practice or some of the challenges that they have may really surprise you. And so it's a feel good for both of you because you feel good. You've now honored a business in the community, but you're also learning and growing and, and networking at the same time. So I just encourage you guys to try it because you never know how you'll feel afterwards. You just have to get over that first step and just take action. All right. Well, that's um, that's where we're going to leave it here. You all need to take some action. Um, actually, no, we're going to leave it here first. First off, it's Thanksgiving. Grateful for you, Deborah Bird, for being here with Thank me on you. Mondays. It means more than you know, because um, if not, everyone will be so tired of hearing me talk about just whatever, you know, that first 10 minute rant I went on, they'd be like, oh my gosh, Todd, shut up. So thank you. And then uh, thank you guys for being here, right? Those of you who are here live, it means a lot to Deborah and I, and um, those of you watching it on the recording, thank you as well. Yes, thank you. Especially those, those repeat ones who are on live almost every week. We're grateful for you all. And any questions or comments that you guys have, always let us know that helps direct future calls. And I'm grateful for you, Todd. Thank you, Deborah Bird. All right, my friends. We will see you all have a great Thanksgiving and uh, go out there and do that small business thing. And then uh, just watch your, watch your wallet. We'll talk to you next week.